everybody! Welcome to Music Moves for Piano, Book 3, Unit 14B. Today we're going to finish up everything that we have left in Unit 14, starting with the song to sing. This is called Swinging. While I sing this song, would you go ahead and fold your arms and just move your hips in a circle. Try to notice what you can about the tonality and the meter of this song. Is this song in duple or triple meter? This is in triple meter. Go ahead and echo these rhythm patterns after me, please. Do de do de do de do ta. Do de do de do de do ta. Do da de do de do da de do. Do da de do de do da de do. Let's name the function. Do de do de do de do ta. So that is an e, a division elongation pattern because we have our do d. You could call those just elongations. At the very end, do ta. We have a tie. So our larger category is a tie pattern. How about this one? Do da de do de do da de do. So that's another division elongation pattern, or you could say just elongation if you wanted, because of that do d. We're elongating those microbeats. Let's identify where those rhythm patterns occur in the song. Start by thinking about the first rhythm pattern. Do de do de do de do ta. Think about how many times that happens. I'm going to show you as we go along. If you want to think about it yourself, you can just close your eyes, look away from the camera. If you want some help, you can look and I'll tell you where those patterns happen. Do-dee-doo-dee-doo-dee-doo-ta. happened twice right away at the beginning of the song and then not again. How about this one? Do da dee do dee do da dee do. You may already know. So that rhythm pattern was right after our first rhythm pattern happened twice, then we had our second pattern, and then we end with a variation on the first pattern. Is this song in major or minor tonality or something else? Remember that this is going to be our question now. We're not just asking are we in major or minor, we're going to ask are we in major or minor or something else. The answer here today is something else. This song happens to be in Dorian tonality. Go ahead and echo these tonal patterns, please. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Remember, this is giving you time to audiate, and then you breathe and sing back. Bum, bum. Bum. Do those patterns on solfege. La re, la re, re la, re la. Ti so, ti so, so. Do, re, do, 
the song to discover if there is a repeated phrase in the song. So do we have one phrase where you do the same thing again? Go ahead and audiate that song. Hear it in your head. Remember that when you audiate, you often will audiate faster than real time. So if you were done audiating that song a long time ago, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But I'm trying to give you time in case you want to audiate in real time, the actual length of time that it would take to do the song. I'm giving you time to do that. So the first phrase of the song repeats. Is the ending phrase the same as the first phrase? It begins the same, but it ends differently. And we go to the end. Go ahead and echo the different phrases. We'll do phrases one, two, three, and four. One. those repetitions, that the first and second phrases are the same, and that that fourth phrase starts out the same as phrases one and two. Go ahead and sing this song with me. Bum, 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 sing with me. chant a chant in unusual meter. What I'd like for you to do is to move your upper body and in your upper body go ahead and walk, have some alternating movements to our crooked macro beats. Notice how these macro beats change. I can look this way while we do this. Ba 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 Very different to go from macro beat to macro beat. Now let's go ahead and tiptoe to our even micro beats. Notice how these are even all the way through the song. Go ahead and sing with me the song Scotty and pretend that you're a crooked people walking a crooked mile. Isn't that a, a line from a nursery rhyme? A crooked man who walked a crooked mile? I don't remember how it goes. There we go. All right, go ahead and sing with me. Oh, now I've got this mixed up with swinging in my head. Let me look. There we go. Bum, ba, bum, sing with me. Ba, 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 
triple meter. Go ahead and move with me, please. Do da dee do, chant macro beats on do. Do, 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 micro beats. Do da dee do da dee do da dee do da dee. I chant macro beats, you chant micro beats. Do, 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 do. I chant micro beats, you chant divisions. Do da dee do da dee do da dee do da dee. I chant divisions, you chant a rhythm pattern. Do ta da ta dee ta, do ta da ta dee ta, do ta da ta dee ta, do ta da ta dee ta. Now, if there are two of you on the other side of the camera doing this at the same time, one of you chant micro beats, the other person chant a rhythm pattern. When we do the second rhythm pattern, switch. So one do micro beats, the other do a rhythm pattern. Second time, switch. If there's one of you on the other side of the camera, go ahead and do two rhythm patterns in a row. Do da dee do, ready go. One, two, I'm going to sing a song called The Royal Guards. Bum, 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 bum. Go ahead and think about, as I do this song, think about the meter of the song. Move your arms. Here's the creative movement if you want to do this. Move your arms while teeny tiny space people march on the backs of your hands. So think about how that feels to have some someone small or something small on your hand, and also how you need to move so that they don't fall off. So what meter is this song? It's in triple meter. Let's do some rhythm patterns in triple meter. We're going to do some tie patterns, and we're going to be using tie patterns later. Remember we talked about there's some overlap with elongation patterns and tie patterns. There are some fine differences. Some are more obvious and some are less obvious. Do da dee do, here we go. Do da dee, da dee, da dee, do da dee. Do da dee do, da dee do da dee. Do da dee, da dee, do da da dee to do. Do, do da dee, do da dee. Do da dee, do, do da dee. Do da dee ta da dee do da dee to do. Do ta da dee ta ta da dee ta ta da dee to do da dee. Do da dee da ta dee ta da ta dee ta do da dee. We're going to talk about what patterns, what pattern CD tracks those are on later because we're going to use those presently. But for now, go ahead and come to the keyboard, get your bench set, sit nice and tall, check your distance. If you're not checking your distance, you're probably sitting too close, so make sure you check that. So last time in Unit 14A, we reviewed all the stuff that we have done and some learned some things that we had not done in A major and in F sharp minor. So today we get to look at something brand new in A major and F sharp minor. I mean, kind of because of all the major chords we've done, but we're looking at the tonic dominant tonic arpeggios when Do is A and La is F sharp. So we're looking at page 45 in book three. So remember 
A major and F sharp minor are relatives. They share all the same solfege on all the same keys. They share the same key signature. They share a lot of sounds. They share the same keys on the piano as well, except for changing so to C in minor. So go ahead and play and sing. Do, mi, so. whatever range is comfortable for you to sing. Go ahead and play and sing those two tonic triads. Then we're going to look at the tonic dominant tonic arpeggios when Do is A. Today all we're doing is separated style. I'll play without pedal. have to sing the roots while you play. I would go ahead and after you play, play the roots and sing those by themselves just to get yourself ready for that. For my voice, I would sing do in this octave and then go down to so. So go ahead and play the A major tonic dominant tonic arpeggios separated, and then also go ahead and play and sing those roots. Now let's look at F sharp minor. And then we would sing the roots. is you can put the pedal down when you play the chords, change the pedal to get to the dominant chord, and then change again to get back to the tonic. So go ahead and play the F sharp minor tonic dominant tonic arpeggios, and then sing the roots afterward. Make sure you mark today's date on both separated styles for major tonality and minor tonality. Then that's actually it for the keyboard skills for this time. After how many things last time, that's the only one you're doing this time. So this section of the unit should be a lot shorter than the last one. So we're going to go to the exploration, creativity, improvisation. We're looking at the right side of page 43. This is the stuff that we didn't do last time. So remember I was talking just a little bit ago that we were going to use tie patterns. We're also going to use rest patterns for these activities. So project one, improvisation in triple meter using a tie rhythm pattern. So you establish a moderate tempo, four macro beat, triple meter, tie rhythm pattern, play it on one key, improvise an idea using a set of three black keys and the four white piano keys around them. Experiment with playing any two piano keys at the same time. You have a lot of choices actually to play. And then you answer your idea using the same four macro beat rhythm pattern or a different rhythm pattern. Okay, so a word about tie patterns. We haven't done patterns where you have intentionally created tie rhythm patterns, so you can Listen to the pattern CD if you would like. Track 27 has some tie patterns on a neutral syllable. Track 28 has those same patterns on rhythm syllables. So I'm going to use just the first rhythm pattern from the pattern CD. Um, I'll do track 28 so you can hear the rhythm syllables. Do da di do, here I go. Do, do, da, di, da, di, do. Oh, and then I answer. Now I need to do another one.
can't end on a tritone. Yikes. All right, so go ahead and do some idea. It may be rather dissonant. Playing a couple of keys at a time and these keys that are right next to each other. So see what you can come up with. Try to find something that has some kind of internal logic. Use some kind of repetition in there or contrast. Um, and then you can use that rhythm pattern or another pattern from that pattern CD track. So that's track 28. Go ahead and do this either using do, do, da, di, da, di, do, or another rhythm from track 28. Part two, we're going to do an improvisation in triple meter using a rest rhythm pattern. So these are also on the pattern CD tracks 23 and 24. Track 23 has these on our neutral syllable, 24 has them on rhythm syllables. By the way, why don't you just write that down on this page? Up here, I wrote pattern CD tracks 27 and 28. Down under project two, I wrote pattern CD tracks 23 and 24. So I would just write that down so you have that as a reference. So you establish a moderate tempo, chant a four macro beat triple meter rest rhythm pattern, play the rest rhythm pattern on one piano key, then improvise an answer to the pattern. So this is rhythm only. You're not adding anything else to it. Do da di do, here I go. Do da di, do da di. So you're just playing a pattern and then answering yourself on one key. So go ahead and either use that rhythm pattern, do da di, do da di, or use another one from track 24 probably with the rhythm syllables or come up with your own. Those are those two projects. Every day when you do those projects, make sure that you use a different pattern. So you're doing these every day and you're using a different rhythm pattern each day as you do these projects. We have a couple other improv activities that are not in your book. So one, we had talked a little bit last time about for articulation, separated style doesn't just mean short. There is a whole range that we can use for separated. You can have very separated, that would often be marked in your music as a staccatissimo. It looks like a tiny little uh, uh, triangle, usually a very narrow pointed triangle. Uh, you can also have very very not very separated. So almost connected. This sort of thing is, we don't have a great way to mark this. Um, sometimes people will write the word detached in a piece of music. Sometimes you'll see people starting to combine articulation markings. You'll see a tenuto mark, which is this straight line with a staccato dot above it. They mean detached. This is a sort of sound that you hear very often in Baroque music. So this sound is not really So this sound that's just somewhat detached. So when you think about your articulations, think about the amount. You can even do that with connected style. Whereas you go from one finger to the other, you can just barely, we use a sound like that for a leggero marking. On the opposite side, you can actually have the keys overlap a little bit. that's marked molto legato, you would have something like that. Your 
you're actually overlapping the keys a little bit. So I'd like for you to experiment with some different types of separated styles. Think about some meter and rhythm pattern. Try different types of separated styles and try different types of connected styles. So everything along that spectrum from very separated to very connected. Go ahead and try at least two or three articulations now along that spectrum. So as you play improv activities, just keep that in mind that separated is a range, connected is a range, and we have a wide variety of things in between. We're going to go ahead and do an improv about a sound idea. So we've been talking about these sound ideas a little bit. I'd like for you to think about an image or feeling and then create a short motive that's with two underlying macro beats that represents the image. So just a two macro beat idea can be whatever meter you want. So I'm going to think about, hmm, I'm gonna think about a lazy summer day. These lazy summer days are gone now. We're in the school year, yay, we're glad to be doing stuff. But think about that lazy summer day. So, do da do do. Now, that's a two macro beat motive that kind of sounds like my lazy summer day. And then create a contrasting short motive with two underlying macro beats. Organize those ideas into a short piece. Think about repetition, register change, and overall form. So you can repeat these as many times as you want, but you're taking these two ideas and making a piece out of them. So my first idea, Ended up needing an extra note at the end and if you need to do something like that you can finish so that's what you're doing you're going to create some sound idea two macro beats long in duple or triple create a contrasting motive and then take those two motives and make a piece out of them think about repetition of the motive think about registers and think about the form that you're creating go ahead and I wish I could be there to hear the piece that you're creating. If this is an idea that you really liked, go ahead and continue experimenting with this throughout the next couple of weeks as you're doing this, uh, this portion of the unit. And show me something that you've come up with. It's got some interesting things for you to try. Let's go ahead and look at some review. This is the last thing that we're doing in this half. We're going to look back at units four and five. So today we're finishing up unit four and we're starting from some review for unit five. So in unit 13, we had looked at the first page of unit four and started to review some keyboard skills with a damper pedal. We had done last time this right foot on right pedal without sound. If you have not done this in a long time, go ahead and spend some time practicing this. Make sure that you have that rest feeling when your foot is down at the bottom of the, of the pedal, not that you're shoving your foot down into the pedal. Then we're gonna practice today right foot on right pedal with sound, syncopated pedal practice. So on the damper pedal, when we talk about syncopated pedal, this is where it comes from. So play any piano key and rest on it gently. Press the pedal down to the floor Release the piano key, but keep the foot down. The sound will continue. You probably can't hear it because that was quiet and that was a long time ago. Next, play another piano key. 
Feel the piano key reach the bottom of the key bed, then move the foot up and down very quickly and quietly. The old sound should disappear and the new sound should be present. Up, down. Up, down. So playing the piano key triggers that foot up and down movement. And you should listen, you should notice that your old sound disappears and your new sound is present. So if you hear this, and we did a whole tone scale. If you do that, if you hear that, that means your foot is coming up with your hand and then you're losing your sound. If you hear this, you know, those two sounds just hanging out together it means you've waited too long to move your foot. So go ahead and practice this. I know that if you've been doing this video series recently and you've been doing all of these units up to this point in the videos, we've been spending a lot of time on syncopated pedal practice. So if you've been practicing this a lot, go back, take a look at all of these steps and just think carefully about every part of it. Make sure there's nothing that you're missing in that. This is such a foundational technique. We're going to use it for a very long time across a broad range of repertoire that it's well worth spending some time on these very foundational pedal skills. So spend some time with syncopated pedal practice this week. Often we've been doing this with a scale. You can just play it with a major scale. You can play it with a series of whole tones. Whatever you want to do is fine. Then French folk song. So last time we had reviewed the melody, so we're in G major, the melody starts on me, and do da de do, play if you can. melody we had two accompaniments there's one Take some time now to practice the melody and the two accompaniments. And then we're going to look today at the rhythm pattern and the tonal pattern. I'll go ahead and chant this rhythm pattern with you. Then I'd like for you to perform it by playing it on one key and create something new with the rhythm pattern. We'll do that together because it's been a while since we've done that. Do da di do chant with me. Do 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 da di. Ready, chant. Do, 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 da, di, do, di, do, 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 da, di, do. That's chant rhythm pattern. Play on one key now. Ready, play. Do, 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 da, di, do, di, do, 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 da, di, do. Then to create with the rhythm pattern, you can choose a tonality. You can say in major, you can choose a chiality or a tonic. Let's say it will be an E major. And then you're going to create a new melody. Something that uses that same rhythm pattern. 
Do da di do, ready play. Do 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 da di do di do 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 da di do. And if you weren't ready with something just then, that's fine. Go ahead and pause and do this right now. Then we're going to look at the tonal pattern. We've been talking recently about not just surface level tonal patterns, but underlying tonal patterns when we start to take our passing tones and our neighbor tones out of the pattern. So first of all, let's sing the melodic pattern, the rhythm plus the tonal pattern. Do da di do. practice that if you need to. So you're singing the tonal pattern of the song in the rhythm. We call that the melodic pattern. Then if we take that beginning, that first uh, half of the first pattern, the tonal, the melodic pattern is mi, so. the, the tonal pattern would be mi, so. There's that part. How about the ending of the first phrase? Our melodic pattern is If we just turn that into a straight tonal pattern, fa, mi, re, mi, do, taking the rhythm out of it. So that whole first phrase would be mi, so, fa, mi, re, mi, do. However, if we think on a deeper level, instead of fa, mi, re, we could hear mi as a passing tone between fa and re. So instead of Actually going to sing fa, re, mi, do. So the first phrase, mi, so, fa, re, mi, do. When we go to the second phrase, our original melodic pattern, mi, so, just becomes mi, so, fa, mi, re, do. We could do the same thing as in the first pattern. Take out the passing tone between fa and re. So we end with fa, re, do. Second phrase, mi, so, fa, re, do. Let's go ahead and sing that whole thing. And if you're confused, that's totally fine. See if you can follow along in your mind or follow along in the music to see how this is working. I am happy to talk with you about this tonal pattern as well. So if you're ready, go ahead and sing along. We're going to sing the tonal pattern of the whole song, this deeper level tonal pattern. Starting on me. play it exactly the same way we just sang it. If you're ready, go ahead and play with me. And then to create with it, tonal pattern. Something can be in any meter, can be any rhythm, so you can think of a rhythm beforehand or you can just dive in so you're adding some kind of rhythm to that. So go ahead and do this project. If you're totally confused, that's fine. Talk to me about it. We'll look at it together. So that's French folk song. We're also reviewing the tonic dominant tonic arpeggios when do is D and la is B. Actually, if you looked at this as part of unit 13, so if you did this in the last unit as part of the review and you finished it all, that's okay. Go ahead and move on. You're done. If you haven't 
finished everything on this page or it's been a very long time since you've reviewed this, then go ahead and play the tonic dominant tonic arpeggios. Let's play and sing our tonic triads for D major and B minor. Play and sing with me, please. Do be so mad. If you didn't play with me just now, go ahead and play now. Then we're going to play the tonic dominant tonic arpeggios in D major. You can either listen or play along. Go ahead and play those and sing the roots. And then B minor. sing the roots. All right, so if you had not reviewed this for a long time, go ahead and review that. Mark anything down that you don't have finished. Same with French folk song. Add in anything that you don't have finished. Talk to me if you have questions. And then you can go ahead, if you finished everything in unit four, put a sticker on the front cover for unit four or cross it off. And then in unit five, we're looking at Let's skip Polish folk song for a moment because I have something for you to do with that. But we're going to look at the tonic subdominant tonic when Do is D and La is B. So we actually have some things that we have not added for these that we're going to add in this unit. So let's go ahead and review just our melodic cadence in D major. Sounds like this. Subdominant, our four chord, and then tonic. We sing that, we sing. And remember, if your hand is large enough, you see these two fingerings here. If your hand is large enough, go ahead and do the fingering on the right side because that will flow very nicely into the subdominant chord. If your hand is not large enough and this is not a comfortable fingering, definitely play the one on the left. Make sure you add in anything that you've not done, but what we certainly have not added is left hand roots. Or you could go down for fa. anything over here that you haven't done and then we're going to look at the arpeggios sound like this Today certainly is to play one, four, five, one. If you've been playing all these major chords recently, you've already done this very recently, very easy. have to sing the roots while you play, though if you can, that's great. Then same things over in B minor. And reminder. We add our left hand root. done on the left side, go ahead and mark that down. Do that now. And then arpeggios. Let's go ahead and play one, four, five, one. So tonic, subdominant, like you see here. Dominant is going to be the fifth note of the scale. So la, do, mi. G flat. 
flat, the same thing. So we have our tonic minor. confusing thing is that our dominant chord in our minor tonality is a major chord. So it's a major chord in our minor tonality. Just like in our major tonality we have minor chords, in our minor tonality we have major chords. All right, looking back at Polish folk song. So, normally I would be playing through this I would be sh showing you a couple of tonal patterns, helping you to remember how to play this song. If you know how to read the music, please don't. Just kind of turn away because I want you to use your ears and we're going to try something. Instead of looking at page 17, I want you to turn over to page 62, which is tying into an assignment for later today. Hey, look, it's one of these assignments in the back of the book. If you've already done this project, I'd like you to do this anyway. It's probably been a while. We're looking at the instructions for the Polish Song Transposition Project. So looking at the instructions, lish, listen to Polish Folk Song on Book 3, CD, Track 11. Name the meter, name the tonality, name the starting syllable. Sing and chant the essential tonal and rhythm patterns. That means you get to extract these yourself. So if you're listening to the song, you say, oh yeah, I hear this rhythm pattern in the song. Or I hear this tonal pattern in the song. They're doing do, mi, so. They're doing la, do, mi. So here's some things that they're doing in the, to in the tonality of the song. Sing the tune accurately using bum. Play Polish folk song on the keyboard. Letter name the starting tone la. Listen for the significant rhythm and tonal patterns, those rhythm and tonal patterns that you found, and learn the root chord changes. Probably tonic and dominant, maybe some subdominant. So I'd like for you to do that. So instead of reviewing page 17, don't do that at all. We're going to come back to page 17 when we do finish up our unit 5 review in unit 15. Instead, just do the instructions for page 62. I'm also going to have you do some other projects here, but this is the instructions here are our review, part of our review for unit five, which brings us to our assignments for this unit. So I'll turn over here so I can give you a list. Assignment number one, listen to book three, audio track 30. I'm just going to have a song to sing in the next unit. No new keyboard pieces. So audio track 30, assignment number two, your tonic dominant tonic arpeggios in A major and F sharp minor, page 45. Assignment three, page 43, right side of the page, both projects, those were the two improv projects. Assignment four, review units four to five which includes the instructions on page 62. And then assignment number five, the Polish Folk Song Transposition Project on page 62. You're gonna do projects one and two. So for this assignment today, you're doing the instructions and project one and project two. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for joining me for Music Moves for Piano, book three, unit 14B. And I hope you have a wonderful day.